What's up guys, Rick the Baritone Streamworks here, coming at you from the bench again. Today I've got my friend Justin Cooper's uh, Luna Acoustic, the spalted maple top acoustic on the bench today. And um, here's a good look at that. Forgive the clutter on the bench. Busy, busy here lately, so I've got a lot of tools out that I normally wouldn't have out, but man, that, that top is just beautiful. Love that. Beautiful. Um, this guitar, there was a unique situation with this one. Um, normally, I'm going to hang this up in the cradle here so you guys can see what's going on. So, normally, guitar comes in and we do, or I say we, but me, I do a little work up on it from end to end, and I kind of make notes on what, what work needs to be done. And this one, man, uh, one of the tools that I use to evaluate a guitar is a relief gauge. And granted, I don't have strings on this thing right now, but, but if I had strings on it, and I put this gauge on here, Normally they read anywhere from five to fifteen thousandths of of relief, maybe even sometimes closer to zero. This guitar read closer to forty thousandths of relief. So what that tells me is that this neck was actually bowed up. The truss rod was actually backed off to the point to where that th this neck was in a it was in an up bow. Uh, it's very different. So when I went to loosen the, uh, the truss rod on this thing, it, it gave me all kinds of shit. Just being frank and honest with it, it did not want to move. Um, I had to at first I tried to use the Allen wrench and you know I mean I was cranking on it. I was like man I don't know if this thing's gonna snap when I twist it or what. What I ended up having to do was get a socket and a ratchet after this thing to get it freed up but now it's free and it's moving and i've got i've got the got the fret you know neck level again so these frets didn't need to be i had to do some spot leveling on these i i would have went ahead and did a full level on them but these are low um that's becoming a theme it seems like in this shop but these were low um 30 thousandths low so that's like two i won't i can't really justify unless it's just a half to like in the case of robert lee's guitar his hummingbird pro um a guitar like like that um i'm, I'm going to try my best to keep from having to be any more invasive than i have to with this with a guitar like this um i'm going to recommend the hoop that he take it and play it for a while, but if he gets to really using this guitar, he needs to get back with him. We're going to do a refret. We're going to refret this thing because it's just these frets are just they're just there's nothing there left for me really to level. But I cleaned it up. It's level. It's nice and nice and clean, and fretboard's cleaned up, ready for some linseed oil. Uh, the other thing was the bridge on this one was lifting and collapsing. And to the point to where I had to get the hide glue out yesterday, I probably should have got that on film. The next time I get the hide glue out, I'll record that for you guys. And, you know, for the ones that care to see it, so. But, um, at any rate, uh, I had to put some water in here, some hot water with an acid brush, one of these. And hide glue will follow the water up into the grain of the wood. So that's a little easier trick, too. Uh, you, get, you don't have to saturate it by any means, but you put a little water in your giving mint to soak up into the wood and open the grain of the wood up. And, um, and uh, then you can come back behind that with, with hide glue. And the hide glue will pull up into the grain. And then you can clamp it down. And I've got a special clamp that I use for clamping these bridges. But yeah, so that's good to go now. Now the next step is to install the bridge doctor. And I'll catch that on the next video segment here. I have to do this in segments so I can piece it all together. Uh, just make, logistically makes things easier. But stay tuned. I'll be right back and um, get set up for that. And, and we'll get rocking and rolling with this, this JLD bridge, bridge system installed. Thanks. All right, guys. We're back again. I'm set up now to do this uh, 
bridge system, this JLD bridge system install on on, uh, on this Luna guitar from my from my friend Justin Cooper. Um, a few things to talk about before we get rolling with this though, because um, I know I'm going to get questions on it inevitably, and I'm actually I think I'm going to I've got an old guitar that I kind of experiment with. I think I'm going to open the side of that thing up and install one of these in it so I can just leave it like open for view and to use it like a demo uh, for, for customers that come into my shop. I think that may be a, a cool little project. I might even videotape that process, who knows. But I say videotape, but telling my age here, uh, re record, video record, <laughs> videotape. Anyhow, um, first thing is, well, how do you, I'm going to get questions. I'm, I'm sure I'm like, why, or what, what is, what is the bridge system? Why, why do you need to install it? You know, what are we talking about here? So let me get, the, get the camera in the cradle and we will discuss a few things before we get to rock and roll. by this diagram or not but that block right there pushes up on the bridge by torque that's being applied through through this rod to the end block and counteracts the tension being applied by the strings it raises the bridge back up so if you've got one, a guitar that needs one of these um, the ways that you can tell you can usually just look at the thing and, and see the bridge is collapsing the other thing is if it's, if the bridge is if it's really collapsing, you're going to be able to get filler gauges up under the bridge between the bridge and the soundboard, like I did on this one. Like it, it's going to need some some glue repair, so um, that's another sign. The other way you can tell is just simply to lay a level uh, on the bridge and look at your bubble. And if that bubble goes to that direction. I'll say it again, if the bubble is going in that direction, not that direction, towards the end of the guitar, then that means that this is tilting down and that's an indicator that the bridge is collapsing. So in essence, what we're dealing with is a, is a bridge that's, that has a tendency to want to collapse under, under tension. Now without strings on, they'll seem fine. That, that's, that's normal. Um, you can actually lay a straight edge across a guitar without string tension on it, and it'll be like, well, you know, it doesn't rock too bad. I mean, um, flat tops are not truly flat top guitars. I'll say that again, too, because that's something that, that I thought was kind of profound when, when I heard it. Um, flat top guitars are not truly flat. They have a little bit of a, of a curve to the top. But that's by design. Yeah, that's going to rock a little. That's acceptable. On a guitar, it's, it's, a, it's something so I have seen a few where you could lay a straight edge without string tension on it, and man, you could get two quarters up under each end of the straight edge, which equates to like an eighth of an inch. It's it's or thereabouts, and then that's just too much. This this is not too bad. This is more of a preventative maintenance thing here um, for the because I, I I know this guy. I've known him since we were in you know, just kids and. I know, I know what these guitars are going to get used to play and gig, and I want this thing to be road ready. So um, before this gets too bad and it's already starting to collapse, we're going to address it now. Structural integrity is everything, guys. My shop, my business model is centered around making these things as structurally sound and playing as good as they can. I, I, I literally treat each of these guitars like individual living, breathing things. I don't come in here with a blanket mindset that I'm going to do this to all these guitars. You know, I don't. Everyone's different. And they all have their own little quirks and problems. They all do different things once they're strung to tension. So I, 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 that's when I get my good, my proper evaluation on is when they're strung up to tension. But I have to get on my soapbox. But you guys, I hope, I hope that really resonates with y'all. Because structural integrity is everything. If you can't, if the thing isn't structurally sound, all the setup work in the world isn't going to matter. It's never going to play right, and it's definitely not going to project sound as good as it can. So take that from me, if nothing else. Um, anyhow, 
inside the kit for the root system, you'll receive instructions. You'll receive the block. And you'll notice there's three adjustment holes in that. And what that's for is this is how you decide how you're going to place your bridge doctor inside the instrument. You have to decide the spacing of where that screw hole is and that foot is. They have to straddle the saddle. And you want to be as far apart as they can be, but still contacting the actual bridge plate. You know, so I'm looking at leaving it where it's at, actually at on this one. That looks good to me. There's no sense in moving that around. Going to the third one's going to be too far back. Going to the, to the first one's not going to be far enough. That looks, that looks good. It's nicely distributed. You get the, the tension rod. It's a wooden dowel. It's rounded on one end. So it's not flat. It's rounded. The other end's flat. And you get a little abalone black inlay to lay over the screw. You have to drill a hole in these guitars when you install these and you have to install the screw. The screw screws into this like so through the bridge. So that's where we're heading with this thing. And it's not super complicated, but you do need to take your time and, and kind of get your marks on this and get it right. Get one shot at this, folks. Now you can get scientifically technical about it and make, you know, make measurements and mark your center line, yada, yada, yada. But my thing about, the reason I don't do that is because I know certain luthiers have a tendency not to get their bridge in the center of the body of the guitar. So if I'm taking measurements off the tail and the sides and the fretboard and, and I'm trying to find what the center of the bridge is, it's not going to be centered up in some in, in most cases, just being completely honest. I don't, I don't trust other people's work enough to do that. I, look, I trust my eyes and I trust what I see and what I feel. So that's what I go by. And right in there is what we're looking at. So, yeah. For any of you guys that are thinking about potentially getting into this line of work, and picking it up as a hobby like I did to begin with, a few things that I could recommend for you guys to keep on your bench. You can buy these at any of the big box um, home improvement centers. They're just little pieces of mirror glass, and you can cut them with a glass cutter. And you know, I put tape around them to protect the edges, but they fit nicely up inside the body of this guitar, and it gives me gives me a way to see what I'm doing in here. And these little cheap lights make short work of working up inside of a guitar. Now, now we can see what's going on in there. But you guys want to push the direction of that too. So hopefully that, that comes across nice. Yeah, so. We're gonna be drilling a hole just behind those, those string pins in there. Through the top. We've got plenty of meat on that bridge plate. So I've seen some bridge plates inside these guitars. They're just, man, if they're if they're inch and a half, they're, yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised. They're just really tiny, and I don't, I don't understand that. If I were if I were the one designing these instruments, I would definitely, um, I would definitely consider things like that. I would also probably install these like Breedlove. Breedlove does this from the factory. They install these from the factory. So, yeah, it's um, it's pretty necessary, really. You know, I mean, if you install this from the from the word go, you you, you know you're never going to have any structural integrity issues there.
pin you can't go by, which what seems to be the center. These string pins are not centered on this on, on the they're not centered with the seam on the um, top of the soundboard of the guitar, so I have to kind of have my eyeball this and get it right. So this is where experience and attention to detail come in. In this case, because of the way that this one is turning out, I'm probably not going to be able to use the the little inlay that they sent off camera. I admittedly have made an ebony uh, plug, and I'll probably end up having to use that to inlay in there because the back of this bridge plate sloped, and that's that's kind of where we're going to end up with this hole. So it's going to be a little bit weird on this one, but we'll get it. good so that's where we're at now the first thing is we've got to get her drill our grip ran off too not sure where it's at go. now they say that they don't want you to to do this you know with the power drill and I understand it would be much better if you had a hand drill I don't know how many hand drills did it by hand I want you to go a quarter of an inch deep with the, I'm sorry, eighth of an inch deep with a quarter inch bit. And that's why I've got a piece of tape on here is like a depth stop. So, kind of lets me know when we're there. Double check. You only get one shot this, folks. Oh, I don't know how many of these I've done. I've done quite a few. Oh. 
bird. Looks pretty good. And we'll switch over to this, the other recommended bit, which is a 964 bit. And I know these videos seem to be getting long and drawn out, and I apologize, but I am, I work slow, and I work safe. That's all there is to the drilling, guys. That's it. Now it's just a matter of getting you gotta take your little there's a little set screw on the end of this thing right there. Set it aside for now. Basically what we're gonna end up doing is taking this rod running it through here like so inside the guitar once I get this screwed in and I'll end up marking this and cutting it off wherever I want it and then flipping the rod back over and sticking it back in and that'll put the tension on there that's how we apply the tension to this thing no big deal easy as pie man these things they install almost install themselves <laughs> I wish all the work that we did here was this cut and dry and easy to do It's always fun trying to find, find your screw. You can't really watch this part because you got your hands in there. <laughs> it's, just, it's like uh, you learn to do things by feel as a guitar repairman. So this is one of those things you kind of have to feel your way to it. There may be a better way to do this. I don't. I haven't found one yet. It seems to work, you know. We'll just have to kind of find it. One of these days, my eyes are going to get really, really bad, and that's when things are going to get tough on me. Because I rely on my eyes pretty heavily. The other thing you gotta kind of pay attention to as you go here is make sure you get it straight. It's easy to get these things kind of twisted and off center. You don't want to do that. You want to get it nice and tight too. Don't bust the wood or anything or strip it out, but get it snug like that. Make sure she's straight. That's it. Good. Bring it out in here. What you see on the mirror there, that's what we're looking at. Kind of looks like it came from the factory like that, huh? <laughs> These things are awesome. They are awesome. So, next step is we got to insert this tension rod in here and go all the way to the end block with it, mark it, bring it out, trim it off, time, it takes a little time, it's not a terribly bad process, but there's where we're at. Now you can use lots of different, you know, implements here to mark with. Normally I'd have a lead pencil, I don't know what I did with it. But I can work it with this. It's not an exact science. Get close. Once you pull it back out, that mark. 
mark right there, right there. I'll end up taking, um, I think it's three eighths of an inch off of it. Yeah, see what the instructions say. I think it's three eighths. Maybe, yeah, three eighths. So. Easier ways to do this. You can use power tools or what have you. I like doing some things the old fashioned way. I've got a little miter box and a little hand saw. I'll do this over here off the camera. You guys don't worry all of that. It's not that big a deal. Just cutting, trimming. Matter of fact, I'll do that and I'll come back. We'll we'll do another video after this one. So, yeah. Stay tuned. All right, guys. Back again. Yeah, I got my little tension rod cut length, and it says to install it or to reinstall it with the uh, pointed end towards the sound hole. So, and I'm the reason for that is because. They want these two to meet a certain way inside the, the bridge system block. So, kind of makes sense. Now, according to these guys, this thing acts a lot like sound post in a violin so as far as the tension on this thing they say you can kind of play around with it and you know find whatever works for you what I like to do is I like to put the set screw back in and I like to get it to work it's tight enough to work just to, you just can't it right to the point where you can't turn it by hand anymore and uh, and then stop because then it kind of depends on the string tension and the interaction of, of the bridge with string tension you have you have to kind of uh, there's no right cut and dry or wrong answer here you have to you kind of have to do this by feel and, uh, and you have to do it with the strings on so the actual final adjustment will get made once the strings are reapplied to the instrument. Yeah, so. Yep, we're getting there. There we go. Sometimes those things just don't want to line up right. But, uh, yeah. Just turn, turn, turn. Get your little set screw, tension screw set where you want it. And you'll feel when it starts snugging up. Yeah, right in there. If there's any question, you can reach in here. And you can kind of try to turn your rod. And if it doesn't want to turn, then that's about where you need to be. Get this watch off. Put my hand in there. There we go. Yeah, that feels pretty solid. I'll give it just a little bit more. That feels good right there. stuff out of here so I can evaluate where we're at with it. It's not a perfect science, people. You just kind of have to go with it and roll with it. I like it. I like where we're at. 
I can already see a difference in this in this bridge. Yeah, it's not rocking near as much now. We're good. This is where we need to be. So now, um, the next step will be to fill in the um, the hole to cover the screw hole up. And like I said, I don't know that that this will this will really sit in there the way I want it to. It doesn't look like it's gonna. So. I don't know what I'm gonna, I may end up using the ebony. No, you know what? I think we'll, we'll use the abalone looking side and we'll use some black super glue and we'll glue that joker in there and then I'll sand it down. I think that'll work. It'll work just fine. Which I've got some rosewood. I could actually make a rosewood plug. I may do that. Pretty good right there. I like that. Let's show you guys all the action here. I think that looks pretty good. Line the grain up with. I think it looks pretty good on there. So we may just leave it like that. Glue it in place and sand it down, call it a day. But anyhow, that's the JLD bridge system install. That's the way I do it. Slow, steady, meticulous work and firms up the, the the bridge the guitar I mean that thing is so solid now it's not going to go in it's not I mean it's a solid instrument so now we can move on to finishing this bad boy up but what's up guys Rick with Baritone back at you again this uh still after this Luna acoustic that belongs to my brother from another mother Justin Cooper and uh got the bridge doctor installed got frets cleaned up fretboards ready got the lens seat oil on the fretboard in the bridge got the um let's see if i can get this on camera here got the the little inlay to cover up the screw there we go a little better where i installed the bridge doctor inlaid didn't turn out exactly like i wanted but it's close it's pretty good next thing I, uh we have to do here is i'm gonna hang up cradle for this for just a second is I've got to deal with this saddle now this saddle I don't know if that's coming across in the audio good that's plastic and plastic's no bueno for uh for tone transfer now the funny thing about this is I believe the nut is tusk so I'm gonna leave it be but it's still kind of odd that they would put a tusk nut on there and not a not a tusk or bone saddle but the difference in the, the, the sound of, of real bone and plastic you hear that here's a bigger piece has like a ceramic quality to it when it hits the frets this is dull you know and this is vibrant so I'm going to take this piece here it's a bone blank that I harvested, I made out of a femur bone. And I'm going to make a new saddle for this guy. And I'm going to document that process. First thing we got to do here is figure out which portion of this that we want. I believe, I believe this side's a little flatter. So we'll go with that. That looks pretty good. Well, we're not wasting. And what you do is you just lay it up here, kind of rough in the profile of it as best as you can, like so. And I have to take it out there on the bandsaw, saw that off, here it is. And then we'll have to thickness it because you notice there's substantial difference in the thickness. We'll do that on the, the belt sander. But that's a the roughing in of the blank there. That's where we're at. And uh, as far as the way it looked before, I think the height is okay. 
I may leave a little bit on there to kind of play with on the highs, but I think it's probably going to have to come down. And the reason being, I hope, hope that uh, the audio is coming across right, but I think the reason it's going to have to come down is this, this piezo transducer here. That thing is it's huge. It's thick, you know. And being brutally honest, that 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 bridge slot needs to be a little deeper. But you know, it just comes back to that question: How deep do you want to get into? You know, making these things play as good as they can. I mean, I don't want to have to charge this guy an arm and leg for this guitar because I don't know what his intentions are 100% just yet with this instrument. So I'm gonna work off the premise that he wants me to get it, get it in good playing order, and fix all the structural stuff, which I spoke about on the previous video. And you know, I mean, the the biggest reason we're changing this isn't because it's plastic. I mean, not, I mean, I, I despise plastic nuts and, and saddles, but um, the reason, the biggest reason I'm gonna to try to get that on camera is, yeah, I don't think it's gonna pick it up. This thing is broken, actually. Right here, there's a brake that goes all the way through that saddle. I had to glue it back just to together, just to be able to use it to profile out the blank. So, anyhow, I'm gonna go out here and do some cutting and sanding, and I'll come back to you guys once I get that done, and we'll proceed to shaping it and and getting it kind of roughly landed in where we want it. So, stay tuned. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, back again. Finally got a uh, saddle blank roughed out, kind of a rough shape. Notice the little notch there for the bead. I've got it compensated. I'm happy with it. It's bone, drill bone. Nice and musical bone. I do love this material versus plastic. Dead. Nothing there. Anyhow. Uh, something else I wanted to show you guys uh, ran into while I was I got the noticing while I was working on this doing all this bridge work on this guitar this bridge slot was not deep enough from the factory like they had just maybe two to three thirty seconds if that of that saddle uh, down in that slot you can see the old witness line there Maybe, hopefully, the light catches it just right. And now, I mean, if I were to use the old, the old saddle, and with the proper depth and everything, it, it would be way, way, you know, way too low. One of the many reasons that you get into this kind of stuff, you have to start making new saddles and new nuts, since it's a skill you need to acquire if you're going to do this work. Uh, there's, it, take, it takes a lot of practice, man. I've been, I've, I've wasted, I've thrown away more than I've sold. So it, it happens. It's part of the game. So, but now it's a little wider and, and substantially deeper, and that saddle is in there and it's solid, and it's not going anywhere. So this thing's gonna play like a dream. But I'm gonna put this in the cradle. got left so I can tell by looking at this just from experience that this is going to be too high so how high I'm not sure yet but I, I feel confident that um, we need to take a little bit of the material off off of the uh, off the bottom of the saddle so from here going forward there's going to be a whole lot of um, putting on taking off with the strings not taking you don't have to take them all the way off you just you kind of back them off to where you can get the saddle back out sand it down put it back in check it and, and it's, there's there are mathematics involved here but just basic stuff i mean you just need to be able to read in 30 seconds of an inch or 60 fourths of an inch you kind of judge your string height and then get your string height where you want it now that i know you know where we're kind of at with this thing that's where we're heading. So now that this bridge is truly like 100% to my liking, it needed some modification. Was not expecting to have to do that, but just goes to show you, you know, uh, this may be a small shop, 
it's just a bedroom in my home, but but we are we are equipped to handle just about anything here. Um, just about. So the next video, I'll 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 show you after I get the, the strings on it, uh, where we're at. Um, as far as the string height, I'll, I'll get a close up of the measurement, and uh, we'll keep walking into this process further and further until we're completed with this guitar. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, back again. Um, speaking of this saddle, and one thing I wanted to mention in the previous video, I probably should have instead of this is going to be a short segment here, but. The first thing you got to do when you're roughing these in, and this is super important, and I'm going to get a good close-up of, of this on video um, the best I can with the device I have to record with. But you want to pay attention to the radius that you're that you're that you're making this saddle to, that you're shaping it to. Um, these little radius gauges, I got mine from Stuart McDonald years ago. You can get them other places a little cheaper, but you want to make sure that that I hope that that translates well in video, but it doesn't have to be exact, but it needs to be really close. It can be a little gap here and there. It's not going to matter. It, as long as it's at least as flat as the radius of the fretboard. This is 12 inch radius. That's what this right the at the 12th fret, 13th fret. That's what I'm I'm reading with radius gauges. Is 12 is a 12 inch radius. So so that's that's pretty good right there. And uh, as I was shaping it, roughing it in, that's what I was shooting for. And the the reason that the B string is the, the takeoff point is further back and the rest of them are toward the front is for compensation for intonation of the instrument it has to do with the, the scale length of the instrument and, and it sounding good to the ear so anyhow um they'll come back and after i get the strings on and and make sure i'm happy with the nut and um we'll go from there and We'll, we'll start landing this saddle where, where it's supposed to be at, so stay tuned. Okay, guys, we're back again with this Luna guitar. Now I've got the, uh, the strings on, and i got it tuned to pitch. And as, as I suspected, I mean, we're a mile high on the string height, but that's fine. It's, that's okay. We've got room to adjust the saddle down and get it where we want it. Plenty down there, and that's, that's a good thing. The, something I wanted to mention here, um, the order that we do things is important when we're setting up guitars guys and everybody's got their own school of thought as to which one is better for whatever reason but the way i was taught was nut relief then saddle now it doesn't matter if you do nut saddle then relief as long as the nut comes first that's extremely important Go ahead and get that done and get it out of the way so it doesn't affect what you're seeing at the 12th fret string height or 17th fret if you're using the capo or there's th many different ways to do this stuff but you just kind of have to pick one way and go with it as far as measurements and i prefer to make my measurements with without a capo on unless i'm doing an electric fender acoustics i mean electrics are a little different but everything else like capos off and i'm looking at the instrument in its natural state at the 12th fret so where we're at right now though is I've got to, I wanted to show you guys something here. So this is a nut action gauge and what that tells me is when you zero this thing out, once you've got the little feet sitting over the string and it's fairly zeroed out there. Yeah, close, close enough. If you press down on the string on both sides of the fret, that tells you the gap between the string and the fret. So at 30 thousandths. Now my specs for acoustics are, it depends on the brand. This guitar reminds me more of a Martin style guitar. So I'll go with those specs. And for the nut, we go from 24 thousandths down to 16 and we kind of step it down to follow the radius of the, of the, the fretboard. So we're at 30 thousandths now. 
and that's going to come down about six thousandths. And the way we do that is we just simply file the fret slots. I'm not going to bore you guys with that because it's a long, time-consuming process. Um, and it'll take it'll take a few minutes of videotaping me just working. So, but I'm doing these as kind of a tutorial for guys that I know that may be interested in wanting to do basic setup stuff. Um, they can always look back on this video and remember nut relief then saddle and do it in that order on these acoustics and you'll be way better off you'll fight yourself if you try to do the saddle then come back and do the nut because oftentimes what happens is you've ended up taking up too much taking off too much material off the, off the saddle and you don't have any material left to take off after you get your nut down to where you're supposed to be and now you're too low it's happened. I've seen it. I've done it myself when I when I was learning this stuff. So, anyhow, stay tuned. We'll come back once we get back after the saddle belt. I got to get the nut right and get the relief right. So, we're plugging away. We're getting there. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, we're back again. Now I've got this thing tuned to pitch, and I've got the nut slots filed where I want them at. We're sitting around 22 20 or yeah, 22 all the way up to around the b string then we drop off to like 20 ish um i try to go i try to step it down but every instrument's a little different once it once again you kind of have to be subjective about this stuff and i know what i can and can't get away with on these instruments so i have to just feel my way through it but here's what we're tuned to pitch right now too so like hopefully you can see that though. we're like that bottom measurement is in sixty fourths of an inch. So we're like nine ten sixty fourths and then eight on the other side. So that needs to come down at least four sixty fourths for me to be happy there. Um three to four anyhow i'd settle for 364 so if we can get 364 out of this and now what you have to be mindful of when you're doing this part is well how much material do you have to take off because you want a certain protrusion with the bridge coming out of the i mean the saddle coming out of the bridge too so we're setting it like like 13 or 14 64 there which is good so we've got if we take that down you know let's say it's 14 we take it down 464 so it puts us at 1064 which is within spec it's tight it's very low but that's within spec so yeah we're we're definitely uh close but this is gonna this is gonna work out and Man, this thing is gonna be—it's gonna be a much improved instrument. It's gonna play like a a two thousand dollar guitar when I get done with it. So, what we do now is I gotta take these strings off. We're loosening them off, and I've got to sand the saddle down. And, and the way I do that is I've got a little belt sander. I'll hook the vacuum to, and um, I'll take the material off the bottom of the saddle, and then I'll put this put that back in there. While I've got that off, I'm gonna reshape the nut a little bit because see, technically. You're not supposed to have more than half the string in your nut slot. At least that's the way I was taught. And well, these guys are deep. So we got to shave some of this nut material down for sure. And uh, yeah, so which is okay. We got a deep nut shelf here to deal with. So we're good on that. So yeah, so we got a little work to do. I'll come back when I get that done. Um, yeah, rocking and rolling, man. Stay tuned. All right, guys, back for the, I think what should be the last time now. Uh, I've got those. I got that nut reprofiled. It's looking good. These two down here might be a little bit deep still, but they don't seem to be catching when you pull the strings in and out. So I'm gonna leave those be. My experience has been with those that if they're a little deeper, it's okay. But these wound strings, man, you don't want those catching. So um, this guy took it down there's still plenty of meat left on the bone for him in the future too i mean this this is all worked out really well on this guitar so we're nowhere near neck reset or anything like that so he's gonna have years of being able to 
adjust this thing and play it. And on the setup, as the camera indicates here, we're at 764 on the low E. And somewhere in the neighborhood of 564 on the high E, which by my spec sheet, you guys can see that's the max and I'm, I'm treating this like a Martin because it's very Martin-esque in the way it's designed. Uh, that's the high end. I know Coop, I know he's heavy handed so I, I'm going to go from that angle and assume that that's where he needs it to be and if he needs me to lower that saddle then we can, we can go lower but he runs the risk at that point of it being too low so it's kind of a give and take but anyhow guys that wraps this one up. Um, it's been a lot of work on this guitar. Just to recap, man, I had to I had to work the nut, had to do some spot leveling on this one, install the bridge doctor, work that down. I actually had to route the bridge slot on this and re and, and regroove it. It was all yeah, I had a kind of a curve to it, which is weird. I don't understand why it would have been like that from the factory to begin with. And then those so those slots have got to be perfectly flat for these saddles to sit flat and transfer sound. Um Made him a new saddle, and I, you know it's it's good to go, man. So, Rick from Bear Tony Streamworks, then wrapping this one up. Uh, get comments, anything you guys want to leave, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Uh, spread the word, man. Get me some work in the shop. Uh, good vibes. Keep keep the good vibes going, man. Pay it forward. Um, peace, guys. Later. All right, guys, I thought I'd just do a quick recap video on this Luna. Um, we had to do the, the work at the nut, uh, file the nut slots down the spec, reshape the nut, had to spot level this thing, had some pretty pretty good divots in here. But spot leveling and polished all the frets, cleaned up the fretboard, linseed oil treatment there and there, installed the bridge doctor, or bridge, JLD bridge system, rather, made him a new uh, bone saddle, Shaped it, got it down to spec, compensated it for him. Um, yeah, man, this one's a wrap, I believe. I don't see anything else that really needs to be mentioned other than it's a, it's a pretty nice guitar now. It plays good. Um, I guess I can give you guys a little demo here. It's probably not a bad idea. So... man that bridge doctor helped this thing a lot using my fingers not a pick here's what it sounds like with a pick questions comments um feel free to ask them hit that subscribe button mash that button i need subscribers man i need to I need to get the ball rolling this youtube thing and uh and the video should get should get better over time i'll get a better video camera set up in here but um you know thanks to you guys for watching whoever has took the time to watch this and if i can help you out come see me get some work in the shop i'll be glad to do whatever i can for you um Peace, good vibes, and appreciate it, guys. Later.